So hello and welcome everyone to Breathwork for Lung Health. Um, my name is Benedict. I'm the founder of Breathing Space School of Breathwork. Now, can you hear me? Can you just give me a thumbs up if I'm coming through loud and clear? Lovely. So who have we got here? Uh, lovely to see you, Anne and Gwyneth, I think there, although I can't see your name, but it's Gwyneth, but I think that's Gwyneth. And Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Lovely to see you. I don't think we've met before. And there's a few other people that are coming in on the chat. So Sol, uh, you're from Mexico and living in Calgary, so you're very close to me because I'm up in Edmonton. Um, and Alex and Nicola, very welcome as well. I am sure that we will have a few more people join us because not everyone comes on time. Sometimes people are a little late coming to things, but that's all okay. So before we start um, getting into breathwork for lung health, um, I'd really like us all just to take a couple of breaths together to kind of really bring us into presence. So I'm going to um, unmute everyone. And um, Beth and Alex and Nicola and Sol, if you feel comfortable, um, do um, put your camera on so we can see you. Gemma, lovely to have you here. Just seeing you coming in. Um, now, I've unmuted everyone, so we may get a bit of an echo. But let's just take three breaths together to really bring us into the room. Doesn't that feel different when we do that? And since I've been doing breathwork, which is about six years now, and there's a breathwork facilitator probably about three or four, I start the majority of my meetings now, or even many of my interactions, just taking a breath with someone. And that simple practice of just Taking a breath with someone makes all the difference to really bring us into presence. I do, obviously, if I'm doing it live with someone, I stand a safe distance away at the moment. But even doing it through technology and through the barrier of screens and the internet, it still works because we're still all here. So thank you for coming along today. Thank you for breathing to start. And let's see what happens in our breath work for lung health. So this is a workshop. We'll be here for somewhere between an hour and a half, depending on how the kind of the energy and the movement goes um, and what comes up. Um, because the workshop isn't always completely structured, I like to th keep things a little bit open. I know about 50 or 60 different breath techniques but there are probably hundreds out there. So I always give an opportunity to people if they've got a breath technique that they know about that they would like to share, we always have that space and that opportunity to, for people to step up and um, demonstrate a breath work that we can all join in on. So we'll come to that in a little while and I'll ask if anyone's got a, a breath work technique and you can put up your hand or you can write in the uh, chat box um, that you would like to do that. So my name's Ben. Um, I'm the founder of Breathing Space School of Breathwork. I've been a breathwork facilitator for about um, two and a half, three years now. And Breathing Space I set up two years ago because breathwork has really not just my um, profession now, but it is my absolute passion. The healing and the transformative power that it has to, to revolutionize people's lives is incredible. And I've seen it on my life because it's changed my life beyond recognition, being able to breathe. And I've seen it with the hundreds of people that have come along to my breathwork sessions or on my retreats or done a one or one breathwork with me. Um, so before, I mean, I can talk and talk and talk about breathwork because I get so passionate about it. Is there anyone before we start um, doing some breathwork techniques who would like to just 
um, say about an amazing experience that they've had with breathwork? Is anyone who'd like to just take that step forward and make themselves a little bit vulnerable and share? Oh, Gemma, someone in the back there. Hey, I'll unmute you. Yeah, Your well, mum. My mum. Go on, Gemma's mum. Tell us about something about breath work. Well, yesterday, it wasn't actually very pleasant. I felt as though I was choking, but maybe it was my throat chakra saying that I need to speak up what I'm feeling. So, yeah, and the time before, um, I felt my heart was very open. So I've had both experiences, but I think they're both very valid. Mm. I love that when you feel things get stuck in your throat. Now, can I just say how many people have kind of had that kind of uh, something to say, something to move, but not been able to get rid of it. Now, wouldn't it be amazing if we could actually breathe through that and release it? And with breathwork, we get a chance to do that. And Gemma's mum, heart opening. Yes, definitely. We get a chance to do that. Is there anyone else who would like to just share something about breathwork that's made them go, wow, that's amazing. Trish, lovely to see you here. Uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Good morning and hello, everybody. Um, yeah, I'd like to share, um, not necessarily with the lung activity, the lung health, but with the, uh, um, when I was with one of your other breathwork sessions and you introduce the box breathing. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband suffers from a heart condition and um, every day he has to take his blood pressure. And so I, he won't come to any of these sessions, but I taught him how to do the box breathing. And um, he, you know, he kind of poo-pooed it in the beginning, but then I said, well, why don't you try it? Give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? I'll show you how to do it. You can take your blood pressure first and then I'll show you how to do it. And then you can do another blood pressure reading just to see what the difference would be. And in the beginning, his blood pressure it wasn't really high. It was like 138 over something. I can't remember now because it was about a month ago. But after he did the box breathing, it brought his blood pressure down to 124 over 84 or something like that. It was very much in the normal range a range that he had never been in, in in a long time and now every time he does his 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 uh, blood pressure he always relaxes himself and does the box breathing and has been able to enjoy a very stable blood pressure reading and he's learning to use that technique whenever he feels any kind of stress to just kind of and of course this is a very stressful time right now but to to kind of calm himself down. And so mm. I think that's phenomenal. Thank you Ben, for sharing that. No, thank you. Um, thank you for sharing that. And I too, um, my blood pressure is always in the, you know, when I was about five, six years ago, it was regularly in the 140s and I've started to bring my blood pressure down now um, through box breathing. Um, I'm personally very careful about making claims about the like the medical properties of breath work you know i don't want to be some because i'm not a medical professional i'm not a doctor i'm not a nurse i'm not trained but i have seen some extraordinary effects um that breath work has brought um including to myself so my blood pressure is one you know i've seen it dropped um, and obviously um trish's husband as well um i was a lifelong asthmatic from the time that I was very young. And some, and my mum came on our last one of these actually, and she told her some stories about when I was a little child and the problems that I had with my lungs and the things that she used to do then. But I was on medication, I was on subutamol and uh, becotide, which is a steroid all of my life. Didn't really make much difference. It wasn't chronic, it wasn't like, well, it was chronic, but it wasn't heavy. But I was always getting wheezy if I did exercise. But my, my asthma is pretty much gone now in the last two or three years since I brought consciousness to my breathing. So I don't want to make any claims that um, I don't have any medical proof for. You know, I'm not gonna say if you do these breathwork exercises, you're gonna be cured of um, pneumonia or bronchitis or anything like that. I, I, I would be irresponsible if I did do that. But the very least I can say is by 
bringing consciousness to our breathing by doing breathwork exercises, it cannot help but strengthen and improve the fitness of our lungs. You know, I just, I can't see how it, it can't, it can't give us at least a better chance of like weathering anything, any infections or any, any problems that we have with our chest. So that's why I created the course and that's why I created these workshops. Okay. Thank you, Trish. And thank you, Gemma's mum for coming along. And um, thank you everyone for turning your videos on. And it's lovely to see um, so many faces here, actually. Can we all let us have a wave to each other and have a look around if you can give gallery view, because we're going to be um, connecting with people all over the world here. So from Canada to the UK for sure. Um, but I suspect other people, that's just the places that I know that people are in. So um, I always start a breath work with an opportunity to just check in with yourself, how you are feeling. Because one of the things I've noticed is that there's uh, me, and I'll say me, but really just it's everyone, we kind of ignore how we're really feeling. You know, we pretend that everything is okay, whereas under the surface things may be different. We may be feeling triggered. We may be feeling anxious or angry or depressed or sad, but we don't allow ourselves to feel those feelings. We push them down. We're, they're, not, they're not of use to us any of the moment, so we pretend they're not existing. Now, one of the things that breathwork is so powerful is connecting with our real, true, highest self. And when we allow ourselves to properly feel we allow a chance for us to process those emotions, process those energies and release them. Because if we keep hold of them in our bodies, we may experience some kind of physical consequence of that. So that might be, you know, really tense shoulders all the time if we're holding in anxiety or in our stomachs. If we have constant anxiety or tension, our stomachs, we might develop stomach aches. So it's simple things like that. So we start a breathwork session with just a, an opportunity to check in with how you're feeling, how you're really feeling, and we create a safe space where it's okay to have those emotions, to have that mental or emotional state that you're in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just drop in, we're gonna close our eyes, going to take some breaths together and I want you to really, really, truly check in with how you are feeling. What are you feeling right now? And whatever it is you are feeling, know that it is okay. Know that it is okay to feel exactly what you're feeling. What does that feel like? To know that it is okay to feel exactly what you are feeling. And then I'm going to ask you what you're feeling and we're all going to take a breath with that so we can all feel it. And I'm going to start with Anne. You're in my top left screen, Anne. What are you feeling right now? You're unmuted. Um, I'm on edge today. Feeling on edge. Mm. Okay. And what does that feel like, Anne, physically in your body? Um, well, my, my diaphragm is pretty tight and, um, and so is uh, sort of my chest. And uh, yeah, everything feels a bit jagged, I feel, yeah. Jagged and tight in your diaphragm and chest. So I invite you to really feel this with Fiona. Maybe put your hands. You don't have to put your hands there, but you can put your hands there. <laughs> sorry, did I say Anne? Sorry, I was looking at Fiona. Sorry. We're going to just connect with Anne and um, just really feel that jagged tightness there. And let's take a breath with that. Thank you, Anne. Uh, Gwyneth, um, how are you feeling? What are you feeling? And what does it feel like? Um, I'm feeling anxious, 
with a lot of pressure um, and that gives me a bit of a tightness in my chest and uh, tension in the stomach um, yeah Okay. That's about it. Let's brew with that. So that's tension and anxiety, did you say? In our yeah. Chest and in our stomach. Let's take a breath with that. Thank you for bringing that in. Thank you for allowing us to feel your vulnerability there, Gwyneth. And Stacey, Stacey MLO, lovely to see you. Where are you calling in from today? I'm calling from England. Lovely. Yeah, so, um, I'm feeling a little bit scatty um, and kind of woke up with a very like kind of tight in my chest and shoulders and just quite heavy, like a lot of stuff is on me at the moment. Sure. And one of the things I love about their shoulders, that's where we carry our shoulds. That's where we, should, we feel that we should be doing something. So let's have a breath, feeling our shoulders, that heaviness and that scattiness. Let's have a breath with that. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, Gemma. Um, let's do Gemma first and then we'll come to Gemma's mum in the background. Gemma, what are you bringing um, today with you? I would say that I've got an underlying sort of anxiety in my stomach, sort of fluttery. Um, but just as you were doing that, my daughter came and did a little bum dance at the door. And so it gave me a little bit of joy, <laughs> joy as well. <laughs> So Good. <laughs> okay. Um, let's 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 have a breath of joy uh, with a bit of a bum dance, <laughs> but just just aware that there's some anxiety underneath. And we get, as humans, we get to experience everything, you know, all at once. We can hold those, o o you know, opposites of joy and anxiety as well. So let's let's enjoy that feeling as well. Thank you, Gemma. And Gemma's mum, what would you like to share? I'm laughing because my granddaughter is creeping in. Thank you, darling. Thank you. So a bit of laughter and a bit of apprehension. A bit of laughter and a bit of apprehension. Let's breathe those things in. Thank you, Gemma's mum. And, and I just want to say it really touches my heart, Gemma, that you've brought your mum. I really appreciate that. Um, I had my mum with me last time we did this. And also I have to just acknowledge that Trish is my mother-in-law. Um, so it's lovely to have you here as well. And I love it when we have generational energy coming into a space. So thank you, Gemma and Gemma's mum. Uh, Sol, um, did you say you're coming in from Calgary today? Uh, yes. And um, today I'm feeling a little bit tense and anxious. I feel like all my neck and my middle back is a little bit um, like hard, heavy and tense. So I'm looking forward to. Yeah. About that. <laughs> okay. Let's breathe into those areas, into our neck and into our back. Let's mm -hmm. all feel that. Thank you, Sol. Uh, Alex. Hello, Alex. What would hi, you like hi, to uh, bring in today? Yeah, uh, I guess just a general general feeling of vulnerability. I feel it mainly in the shoulders and, uh, and a little bit in the stomach, a little bit. Yeah, in the stomach. Okay. Let's bring in some vulnerability into our shoulders and to our stomach. Thank you, 
Thank you, Alex. And it is, you know, we are putting ourselves into our vulnerability just by letting ourselves come on screen and be seen and be heard by people all over the world that we've not met. So I want to acknowledge that again for everyone. Thank you for stepping into your vulnerability. Uh, Trish, what would you like okay. to share today? I'm feeling um, a mix of joy and sadness. Um, of course, you know, we're all sad because we can't be with our loved ones. Well, especially when we want to be. Um, and today is my son's birthday, as well as my granddaughter's birthday. Um, his daughter was born on, on his birthday. And um, I'm feeling joyful because of that event. Um, and I got to speak to both of them this morning. So that was very uplifting, you know, to be able to do FaceTime with them. But um, not being able to be there and hug them is something else. And um, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, a tightness in my chest. And, and I think heavy heartedness would be the feeling. Mm. Heavy heartedness. Let's just really breathe into that heavy heart. Thank you, Trish. Thank you. Nicola, lovely to see your face. Hi. <laughs> what would you yeah. like to breathe into today? Um, I've got quite a lot going on. <laughs> I won't give you a huge list, but um, yeah, a lot going on today. Um, quite a lot of overwhelm, um, panic, and sadness kind of all mixed into to, to one. Um, and I've got like others have mentioned, a lot of tightness in my chest, and muscles, shoulders, temples. Okay, overwhelm and panic. Mm. You know, I, I really, I know those feelings only too well. So let's just take a breath with feeling those. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, Fiona, what would you like to bring in? Um, this can you hear me? I don't know. If yes, we can hear you. <laughs> this first time I've actually logged on, so um, I'm a bit nervous. Um, I'm tired and. A little bit overwhelmed, but excited as well and interested. So that's what I'm bringing. Okay. And how does that feel in your body? What do you feel right now physically? Um, there's some um, kind of a holding around my head. It feels like there's a some kind of pressure um, and a little bit of pressure on my chest. Okay, let's feel that as kind of holding, you know, pressure in your head and maybe in your chest, being interested and thinking a lot. <laughs> let's take a breath with those. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll check in as well. I am feeling actually really excited to be here right now. Um, I know I love holding spaces. I love holding these workshops. I love being passionate about breath work. I'm also aware of some tension in my shoulder uh, because of other things that are happening, um, you know, for me at the moment. So I'm just aware of that, just kind of going down my back. And that, but that's in the background, um, you know, because of the situation and other things that have happened out of here. But I'm really excited to be here today. And I can feel that in my, I feel it, actually I'm feeling it in my cheeks at the moment because I can't stop smiling because I'm, I'm really excited at the moment. So let's just have a breath with uh, allowing ourselves to feel excited as well.
Now really, we've just done two exercises. First of all, we dropped into how we were feeling and we allowed ourselves to feel it. And that is an exercise in itself. Just closing your eyes, going inside and checking in with yourself. How are you feeling? Okay, that is a breath exercise. And when we start to kind of notice and be aware of how we're feeling in our bodies, rather than just ignoring them or pretending that they're not there or, you know, taking painkillers if they're hurting, we actually allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling. Then we start to release some of that energy. But the other exercise is also articulating that, especially when we're witness doing so and allowing ourselves to feel that and thinking and saying it's okay to feel all of those things. So those are our first two exercises, which is more kind of on the energetic kind of layer of breath exercises. But I love doing them to start with because it brings us, it connects us together as a group and a workshop. So any questions around that? that first little exercise, I do really recommend just every so often, just drop inside yourself. How are you feeling? And, and allow yourself to feel it. Don't try and push it down. Try and try and ignore it. Don't think I have to do better or I should do better. It's so when you feel that you, say, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do better. You are fine and you are perfect exactly as you are and whatever you are feeling right now. And that acceptance is one of the biggest lessons that I ever learned. So let's just transition into our next stage with um, three breaths together. No, let's not transition with three breaths. Let's transition with something else. Um, let's transition with a... Okay. Make your lips go like that. There you go. Self tap as well. <laughs> so breath work and meditation, you know, can get really serious sometimes. You know, it, you know, people take it way too seriously. Meditating in their caves or doing yoga religiously at four o'clock in the morning or many other practices, but it is something that we can have fun with, and there can be a real lightness over as well. So um, before every time we do an exercise, um, we will um, see if anyone else wants to step up with a, a funny little thing to do to help change the energy. So any questions before we move on to our, our first proper breath work for lung health exercise? Any questions? And any question, there's no question too stupid. Anything anyone would like to say? Okay, so the first one um, is a breath, is a lung stretch. And this does two things. It helps increase the volume of our lung capacity and it helps with our lung elasticity. Um, so I was taught this by my teacher when I was um, on my breathwork training. Um, there aren't really any contraindications. Um, I wouldn't do it because it involves breath holds. I wouldn't do it standing up. I would do it always sitting down or lying down and you can do it in different positions. And if you put your body in different positions, air will kind of go into different places so it's good a good one just to try out in different places as well and i'll explain it first and then we can all do it together so we take a, a deep breath we fill up our lungs through our nose with our mouth closed we hold it for three seconds we take a sip more air and we hold it for three seconds and then we take a third sip of air we hold that for three seconds and then we exhale gently through the mouth. Does that make sense? Thumbs up if that makes sense. Okay, so sitting, are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. So first of all, take a deep exhale. Close your mouth, inhale slowly through your nose until you are full up. And when you think you're full up, you can't take any more. Hold for one, two, three. Take a sip more. One, two, three. A sip more. One, two, three. And then exhale. And you can do that through your mouth or your nose. 
Um, good. Nicola, I'd say see if you can sit with a straight back if you can, rather than do it uh, starching. I mean, you can experiment with that, and that will just bring air into different places of your lungs. But the most, you'll get more air into your um, chest if you're sitting with a straight back. Okay, let's try that again. So first of all, exhale fully. Inhale fully through the nose. And try and do this inhale slowly. And when you're at your top, hold on two, three, inhale a bit more. One, two, three, inhale a bit more. One, two, three, and then slowly out. And then let's do that again. Gentle inhale, exhale fully. Inhale slowly through the nose until you are full. One, two, three, inhale a bit more. One, two, three, inhale a bit more. One, and we're going to go to five, three, four, five, then a bit more. One, two, three, and then exhale. Okay, so you can give yourself a wiggle or a tap or something like that. Okay, so that is a lung stretch and you can do that as often as you wish. There's, there aren't any contraindications with that. Uh, if you've got sensitive lungs with any of these exercises, if you do have sensitive lungs, if you're suffering from a lung infection, go gently to what is comfortable for you. So I would recommend doing this maybe um, twice or three times a day, once when you wake up, once when you go to bed, and I often do this before I do exercise of any kind. So if I go out jogging, I'll do a little lung stretch. I often do this before I actually give a, a conscious breath work to stretch people's lungs out. Are there any questions around this so far? Now, one of the things I've learned um, through training breath work uh, is your lung capacity increases uh, the more resistance your breath has on, on the way going in. And that's why we breathe through our nose because um, there's more air, there's more surface area if your breath goes through your nose than just straight in through your mouth. Um, so that's why we breathe through our nose on that. The exhale, again, if you can control it, go gently out through either through your nose or through sort of a, a, a straw mouth, we call that, um, is also more advantageous. Okay, that's our first exercise. Uh, would anyone like to do a very quick transition exercise before we move on to our next breath work? Would anyone like to step up and do something silly or something little breath related? Well, I can see some shaking heads going on there. Mm. Okay, let's do a very quick shaking head exercise. <laughs> do all this and we're gonna do this for 30 seconds. Six, 10, 15, 20, 25, and okay, you may be feeling a bit ooh, like that. Um, and I do that is actually a legitimate breath exercise as well. I call it roller coaster breath um, because. As you get older, the fluid in your ears starts to kind of solidify and you get little crystals and you're more prone to um, getting dizzy or getting um, vertigo. And one of the exercises that you can do for that is to really shake up your head. My, and I used to get um, sick going on roller coaster rides, but my wife who loves roller coaster rides said, you've got to go on these. It will shake up your ear fluid or get rid of those crystals and then you'll be fine and you'll like roller coasters. So I did, <laughs> and I love roller coasters now. And this technique I learned from Kundalini Yoga, actually, which is a Kundalini Kriya. But it has the same effect. It really shakes up your, the fluid in your ears to kind of really 
um, keep your balance kind of um, young. So that's a, a good little one to do as well. Um, again, you know, it's an easy, quick one that you can do. It doesn't have to be with a full on Kundalini razzmatazz around it. Like if it, is anyone a Kundalini yogi here? Sol, I can see you are. So you'll know, you know, there's a lot of um, stuff around Kundalini yoga, you know, like putting a white towel on your head or doing a lot of sheepskin and a lot of chanting and a lot of Sanskrit. So you don't have to do all that if you want, if you don't want to. You know, it is lovely. I love Kundalini yoga, but you can strip it away to just the exercises. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate another technique now. And then I'm going to start opening it up to see if anyone's got any techniques that they would like to share with us. So the next one is the opposite to our lung stretching and our lung filling. This is a lung emptying technique, okay? Um, and this is where we really try and empty our lungs full of all the air and really shift, um, you know, stale air that gets stuck in our lungs. Now, I know I've got at least a couple of nurses here because I know Gwyneth and Gemma, you're both nurses, aren't you? Or you're in, in the medical practitioner. Um, is there anyone else who, who, who's in the medical world? Uh, anyway, I just like, you may have seen this little video going around. Um, I got it from someone this morning, actually, and I've seen it just since then posted a couple of times. Uh, I'll just share this little video with you, actually. Okay, hang on two seconds. I'll just get it going. All right, I'm going to just share my screen with you. Uh... Hello, hi, it's uh, Dr. Munshi here at Queen's Hospital. Um, I'm going to show you a few techniques that my colleague here, um, uh, Sue Elliott, who's the Director of Nursing, um, has advised from her time in ITU. So what I need you to understand is that um, once you have an active infection, you need to be uh, getting uh, a good uh, amount of air into the bases of your lung. Um, the only way you're going to achieve that is having a technique, which Sue has kindly shared with me with her time in ITU. Um, being a nurse, they were doing this on a more daily basis, whereas as a doctor, I, was, I didn't probably pay as much attention. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to go through the technique um, as Sue has shown me. Um, and I want you guys to start doing this if you have the infection right from the beginning. If you want to do it before you even pick up the infection, good idea. Anyway, the way it will work is you will take five deep breaths in and each time you'll hold your breath for five seconds. On the sixth deep breath, you will take it in and you will do a big cough and covering your mouth. Okay, you will do this twice and then you will then lay flat on uh, your bed with a pillow in front of you, taking slightly deeper breaths for the next 10 minutes, because you've got to understand that the majority of your lung is on your back, not on your front. So by lying on your back, you're closing off more of the airways, the smaller airways. And this is not good during a period of infection, can lead to uh, something called basal atelectasis. This can then lead to a secondary pneumonia. So it's very important that you guys understand this. So two cycles of uh, deep breaths, hold your breath for five seconds, breathe out. Sixth breath on each cycle, you will do a big cough to open up the lower airways and cough up anything. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. That's one cycle. So you've done one cycle. Okay. So that's just that's just doing the rounds actually just now. Um, and what and if you and I'm going to post the video um, at the bottom of this share as well. What's really interesting is that it's not the doctor who knows this technique. It's the nurses that know this technique. Um, 
and the doctor just says, I didn't know anything about this and I had to teach her. And this, um, this is, I'm not surprised about this. It was my wife, Jen, who's a nurse who taught me this technique as well. Uh, and it, so I'll teach it in a little slightly different way um, with slightly more force because um, but always again with any breath technique you go to something that is to your own depth and comfort so if you've got irritated lungs if you do have an infection you know your lungs are going to be much more sensitive so don't don't go to it with such an extent good for clearing the air but also like if you've got any gunk in your lungs any any phlegm really good for loosening up and getting that out as well any questions before we start so we're going to take some um, deep breaths and uh, we'll have a hold uh, just a short one at the top um, and then at the end of the fifth one we will cough now you can you don't just have to do one like that you can cough a little bit more vigorously if you want Sol I can see your hand up um is it better to breathe through the mouth or or nose or it's and um, gen generally and, and that's actually the third exercise that I always do it's about nose breathing generally um, breathing through your nose is more optimal okay so unless there's a specific exercise or reason that you're breathing through your mouth I recommend breathing through your nose okay, okay? and that's because there's so much more apparatus in your nose to kind of filter and sterilize the air than there is through your mouth now if you're taking really deep um, you know you're trying to improve the, the health of your lungs for this I would say breathe through your nose but um, for short periods or for particular exercise, it's fine. Just generally, I would be breathing through through your nose if possible. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Let's do it then. So inhale fully through the nose. Hold. One, two, three, four, five. Exhale. Inhale fully through the nose. Exhale. Inhale fully. Fourth time, inhale fully. Exhale. Last time, inhale fully. Exhale fully and keep going until you're really empty. Now cover your mouth with your elbow and cough. <coughs> and then and just take a breath. And we'll do that again. So inhale fully through the nose. Hold. Exhale. Inhale fully. Exhale. Inhale fully. Exhale fully. Number four. And last one. Exhale fully. Keep going. <laughs> Empty everything <coughs> and then cover your mouth and cough. <coughs> okay. And then, um, you know, as the doctor said, lying on your front is also very good. I remember 
Um, my mum told me that's what they used to do for cystic people who suffer with cystic fibrosis and um, lying on the front to help clear um, that drainage from, from the lungs. Any questions about that technique? Uh, Nicola. Um, you know, just before you do the cough mm -hmm. at the end, and you said, so do you do a breathe in and then a deep breath in, a deep breath out, and then cough? Uh, the details aren't, uh, uh, you know, once you've held your breath and then you exhale, yeah. keep going until you're really empty and then so cough. So in and out and then cough. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it won't matter too much if you like take a breath in between and you can just do it like, like really exhale and then cough. You know, you can play around with those things. It, it, the, the details aren't too much matter, but it's to really empty your lungs and then cough. And uh, can I just ask, I know well, a couple of people that have, um, are struggling with the breathing because they've got the corona. Um, would you recommend this would be helpful if they have it or it's just to prevent it? Um, okay, so first of all, I'm not a medical practitioner and I would say any breathing exercise, really you do at your own responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. and you know you have to take that ownership of your breathing i know from my own chest infections everything becomes really tight and like gunked up and one of the things to do is to help release some of the you know help loosen up and get some of that shit excuse my language get some of that shit out of your lungs okay mm -hmm. now the only thing is i know from personal experience when you and your lungs are really tight they can be very sensitive and sometimes it's too tight to be loosened like that and you may if you do it too aggressively, you may damage your lungs. So I would say go gently, but clearing your lungs is really important. You know, really important, uh, you know, if you've got any kind of lung infection. So I think it is very good, but you just have to encourage them, you know, they just have to go gently, you know. Yeah, to, and listen, listen to their own bodies. Listen to their own bodies, you know, really listen to what is good for them. But, you know, clearing your lungs, and as the doctor said on that video, you know, you need to, you know, it, you need to get more air in there, and that's the way to, kind of clearing up does that help your question yes thank you very much thanks great okay alex you had uh, your hand up as well um go ahead hi uh i just want a clarification on the lying on the bed and face down rather than on your back or that yeah that bit and when <laughs> uh, sure okay so um i'm not you know I, I i can talk about like theoretically why it works is because you've got more, your lungs are, there's more lungs on your back. So when you're kind of on your front, the fluid will kind of naturally drain down outside, you know, out to, to, out to your trachea and, and then coming out that way. If you're lying on your back, it just tends to pull more at, at your back. Okay, that's not a technique that uh, I have actually taught very much myself, um, but it's, a, it's just a, a generally good kind of, technique to do and i know that for people who have chronically bad i think it's i mentioned cystic fibrosis i remember um hearing that they will do kind of drainal lav um uh, you know drainal lavage i think they called it uh, mm -hmm. sort of tapping gwyneth you, can you answer on that yeah I, I think it's um if you're lying lying on your front over a chair you've got more of your lungs exposed on the back and they used to do like um for people who have cystic fibrosis to um physiotherapy to pat the back to help drain drain um whatever congestion that was there um this is what they do for instance in people who have got this virus or intensive care where they um they can put them on on their fronts and hope that the uh, lungs will drain better in that position so it basically it's gravity yeah 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 i hope Thank that you. helps <laughs> yes definitely uh, great does that answer your question alex yeah I, I, I guess i just wanted to know whether that exercise that you just demonstrated for all of us is one we should do on our stomachs or in seated position or, or either is it just particularly important when if you're infected or is it a good idea anyway just to do that um i get do you want to answer that or mm. i think um what the doctor was implying in in the video that he did this morning because i i saw it earlier on as well was to before you get ill or anything it's just a good exercise to do to keep your lungs strong and that you are able to um 
expel any anything from them already and get used to coughing well and strong so that your your lung capacity is getting bigger and stronger and so that you're fitter for anything that might hit you yeah thank you thank you you're welcome <laughs> um do we have any yoga practitioners here so and Anne. So one of the things that is uh, a few people, um, you, there's a lot of inversions in yoga, you know, even if you're doing stuff like downward dog. And again, that's that same gravity situation that it, it's just general good for health for so many reasons, not just lung health, but to do inversions, you know, not like full on headstands or anything, but to, you know, if you're putting your chest lower down, then that's going to, it's gravity as Gwyneth said. Okay, uh, yogis then, um, this is one for you, which you will know. This is um, another variation on the um, lung emptying technique. How many people here know lion's breath? Okay, we're gonna have a little bit, um, we're gonna have a variation on lion's breath with this exercise. So one of my teachers, one of my yoga teachers, she used to, do lion's breath with this kind of basic, basic top technique. We used to do something called Kaplabati, which is breath of fire, which is where you um, you, you contract your abdominal muscles um, and do sharp exhales through the nose. So it helps if you put your sort of hand on your belly like that. So you're already kind of using your diaphragm and your lower belly to like really expel the, the, um, the, the air at the bottom of your lungs. Okay. And then we go into lion's breath. Okay. Are you ready to be frightened everyone? Cause I'll demonstrate. You stick your tongue out, you roll your eyes up and you focus at the top of your head. So it looks like <laughs> like that. Okay. So well, let's all just do lion's breath together. And because you're not looking at the screen, no one will be able to see you, okay? So we'll just do that, it's tongue out, look upwards and expel your breath and kind of, <clears throat> kind of throaty sound. So three, two, one. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna put those two exercises together. We're gonna do 30 rounds of Kaplabati. And again, go to a strength and at a speed and a depth that is right for you. So that's where you kind of contract your abdominal muscles with a short, sharp exhale. We'll do that 30 times, and then we'll go into lion's breath. Now, if there's other people around, again, you're expelling air from your lungs. So we have to be really mindful of that in this time. So you can always do that with your, you know, something across your face so there's not too much moisture coming out when you do that. Any questions around that? Okay, let's do 30 rounds of Breath of Fire. Ready? Take a deep breath in, close your eyes. And then when you're ready, just come back into the room. Okay, so that's another lung emptying technique, which really uses the diaphragm to really shift up the stuff um, at the bottom of your lungs. Um, and again, you know, contraindications if you've got sensitive lungs, um, maybe if you're pregnant or early stages of pregnancy, breath of fire isn't recommended. Um, it can be too destabilizing. But you take responsibility for your own breath work for anyone who does it, really. This is just breathing, so there aren't really any contraindications. If you've got abdominal surgery, you mustn't go too hard on those abdominal contractions. Um, and again, with any of these breath holds, sometimes if you're prone to dizziness or low blood pressure, you've got to be careful. That's why we do it sitting down. Any questions around those two lung emptying techniques? <sighs> okay, would anyone like to share a small transition for us? 
Uh, Gemma, go ahead. I was thinking of um, a Sufi breath in um, Dan Brulé's book called Sniff and Poo, um, which is three short sniffs, sniffs up through the nose and then you release making a sort of sort of sound. Do you want to give <laughs> us a demonstration once and then we'll all, and then lead us in it? So it's three short breaths in through the nose, so and then but it's uh, good for changing the mood, good for energizing, good for a bit of uplifting. Okay, great. Uh, how many times should we do this? Or do you want to just lead us in it? Oh, I'm not very good at leading, so I get lost with the numbers and stuff. But We're um, doing fine. So I'll tell you what, you start and then we'll just follow with you. And when you think it's right for us to stop, just stop and we'll, uh, we'll all stop with you. Okay, all right then. So <laughs> if everyone's ready, okay. <laughs> Uh, give Gemma a chat for like stepping up and doing something like that. <laughs> it takes a bit of guts to um to step up and to lead something online or in a workshop so well done Gemma you know thank you and just tell us about the book that that's from and um, that's a book um Dan Brule just breathe and it's about his experience of breath work from how he how he learned it as a child when he was in um a sort of I think in a, I think I was going to say a nunnery actually, where he had to, he realised by taking a breath, he didn't sort of react to other emotions. And then his life through things like Navy Seals and through meeting all different people and uh, learning all different techniques by going to see different sort of yogis and other sorts of things. So yes, yeah, so there's, there's a whole history of different breath works and it gives you different exercises to practice. Uh, yeah, it's one of it's one of the best introduction to breath work books out there. I've just put a link to it in the chat. It's Dan Brule, Just Breathe. Um, he's, a, he's a very personable writer. Some breath workers can't write books at all. He can, and he's a very eloquent and very uh, charismatic speaker as well. So that's Just Breathe by Dan Brule. Um, okay. Breath technique. Would anyone have a breath technique that they would like to share? Trish. Okay, you'll have to unmute yourself. Um, it's not really a technique per se. It's almost like a little infomercial. <laughs> this is um, a number of years ago. <clears throat> I had surgery on my lungs and or one lung. Um, and as a result, the lung collapsed. After the surgery, um, the doctors gave me this device to help improve lung capacity. And I lost it, but then my daughter found one for me and replaced it. So since then, every time I get a, a lung infection or pneumonia, um, I take this device out. It's, uh, it's called an incentive spirometer. I'm probably not pronouncing it the right way. Anybody ever seen one like this before or something like this? Yeah. And it's, it's great because um, there's a little device in the front that is like a, a guide, a, a measurement, and it, it starts at 100. I'm not sure what it's measuring, probably the amount of capacity that you can take in. And what I, when I first started, I had difficulty with 100. So what you do is you, you're inhaling, and you have to try to keep this little float thing in the happy face right here. And can you see that? Is that very clear, Ben? And so it's kind of like this. You keep it at that. And I, in my head, I try to, try to get up to five, run a count of five. Um, and I do that a couple of times. If I can do that successfully, you know, about 10 times, then I can increase it up to the 200 mark and keep going. Now, I've I'm, I'm got some kind of a lung problem going on right now. So the, the most that I could do right now is 300, but I'm going to keep practicing. And I, I really feel, you know, when I work on it, that it, it really helps to expand my lungs. And uh, I'm enjoying that. Sorry, Ben, can't hear you. 
Um, no, that's great, Trish. Carry on if you'd like to. Well, the other day, the interesting thing is um, I was on Amazon and this came came across my screen. And I thought, what? What are you? Like, you mean you can actually buy these? I thought you just got them at hospitals. But you, you can buy it and it's a great way to measure. So it's, it's a little plug for uh, a way to measure how much how much capacity you're actually taking in. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> Amazing, thank you, Trish. Um, and by the way, Trish's daughter is my wife, <laughs> so she is amazing. In fact, she just came in there actually, um, and was just talking. So, Trish, that's an amazing little uh, gadget that you've got there. Um, measure it. Uh, so, the little dial increases resistance. Okay, so you start off so there's not much resistance, um, and then you can obviously increase the resistance and the excess. Uh, that's the dial there, and then obviously your the exercise is to keep the, the ball up to a steady flow so you're like controlling the inhale and the exhale of your breath now what you can do is um we can do a non-technical version of that right now this is a technique called straw breath um which is another technique they use quite a lot in the medical profession um so it's good if you have a straw but you know if you don't have a straw you can just you can just kind of make your mouth into a very small O shape. And again, the resistance that you can change on the dial on um, Trish's machine is a bit like the amount of resistance you would um, create by making your mouth a little closer and wider. So let's just, now you can also, like if you put your hand, it really only works on the exhale, but you'll be able to feel the pressure of the air coming out. And you want to keep it, um, you know, as steady as you can. Okay, so let's just do maybe, um, I'll get my clock up and we'll do two minutes of straw breath. So, and the other idea behind this, you're really, you're increasing the resistance of the air coming in and you're increasing your control. So that's the control of your breathing, the control of your diaphragm, the control of your intercostal muscles to kind of keep a slow, steady air coming out. Okay, so everyone cool with that? Two minutes, do you think we can do that? Okay, so let's get my clock up. Ready? So if you want to, um, to help you feel that kind of slow, steady inhale and exhale, you can measure it on your palm. Um, and let's go. So we're halfway through, if you want to, you can change the size of the mouth shape, make it smaller, which will make it harder and increase the resistance. One minute left. And one more.
So that's straw breath, a sort of like non-technological way of trying to approximate what Trish showed us there, increasing the resistance from our breath. Um, it is also a really good training and technique um, to kind of almost um, practice ourselves dealing with less oxygen. You know, we're used to, if we need oxygen, take a deep breath in, you know, but actually what would it be like if we could train our bodies to use less oxygen? which is altitude training, if you like. That's what happens when we go up, you know, above 1500, 2000 meters, we start to train our body to get used to more oxygen, which I'll come on to next, actually. Does anyone have any questions about straw breath before we move on? Uh, anyone like to do anything silly before we move on? Let's do something silly. Uh, we're gonna do some humming. Actually, like that. I am muted everyone there because I wanted to share that. Uh, and I'll talk about that um, little humming breath. I can't remember the Sanskrit name for that. There is a Sanskrit name for that. Uh, there is a Sanskrit name for that because that is a um, bee breath, I think it's called, but there is a proper Sanskrit name for it. Um, uh, because it's a really beneficial breath work technique. And that does something called uh, increases nitrous, nit nitrous oxide or nitric oxide in our nose, which is one of the ways that our body sterilizes the air coming in. So nitrous oxide is apparently they started discovering its beneficial effects about 20 years ago and our nose cavities somewhere in our nose is one of the few places that actually creates it naturally. And that technique of buzz breathing, bee breathing, stimulates the area where nitrous, nitric oxide, nitrous oxide I think it is, is created and really helps sterilize the air. So that is a very valid technique as well. So I'm gonna come on to nose breathing a little bit now. So I mentioned that um, nose breathing is optimal just in everyday life. I read a book last year called The Oxygen Advantage by someone called Patrick McCown, uh, which is an astonishing, oh, thank you, Nicola, Ramari Rebreath. Okay, so that's the, the buzz breathing. Uh, so I um, read a book called The Oxygen Advantage by a guy called Patrick McCowan. Um, and I went to a, a few workshops, Oxygen Advantage workshops uh, with him. And he uh, went and studied with a famous Ukrainian breath worker from the 80s and 90s called Bateko. And Bateko's idea was we generally breathe too much. Um, we take too much deep breaths and our bodies get lazy and they get used to having too much oxygen around. Physiologically, it was we are blowing off too much carbon dioxide from our, uh, from our, blo uh, from our blood. So when we breathe, especially with our mouth open, <sighs> we're releasing a lot of carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide, believe it or not, is essential for respiration because the more carbon dioxide we can tolerate in our blood, the more oxygen our blood can carry, can, can carry to our cells. And this is something called the Bohr effect, the B-O-H-R effect, which was discovered about 100 years ago. So basically, the more carbon dioxide in your blood, um, the more oxygen your blood can carry. So his idea was really to stop breathing off excess carbon dioxide. And you do that by breathing mainly through your nose and not through your mouth. And as well as there's just so much more filtering and sterilizing equipment in your nose, it's much optimal for health to just generally breathe through your nose as much as possible. But it's one of those things, breathing, that we're kind of unconscious about, we don't really think about very much. Um, you know, we'll just naturally breathe and sometimes we'll be breathing with our mouth open. So the next exercise is just something just to do generally to real bring a consciousness and awareness to how you are breathing. And whenever you catch yourself breathing through your mouth, 
close it. Now, there are particular times where I would re really recommend you bring some consciousness around this. Firstly, is when you're exercising. Now, if you ever try exercising, whether you're you know, doing some aerobic exercise and you try and do it with your mouth closed, it is really difficult at first. Like for the first few times you do it, you will, you will do about, you know, a quarter as much exercise as you can normally do. But after a while, after you've been doing it for about a week or so, maybe 10 or maybe five, 10 sessions of doing it, you find something absolute changes and you can go on much further and much faster and, than you could before than if you breathe with your mouth open. And it's because breathing with your mouth closed is, a sim is similar to altitude training. You're training your body to tolerate higher levels of carbon dioxide in the blood. Basically your blood becomes slightly more acidic um, and therefore it can carry more oxygen around to, to your cells. I could talk about the science side of things, the physiology, because I do understand it. It's a bit complicated, but basically you're trying to stop your body letting off too much carbon dioxide. You're, you're training your body to tolerate high levels of carbon dioxide, and that means your blood can carry more oxygen around to your body. So the first thing is just be conscious of it. In your everyday life if you find you're breathing through your mouth close your mouth simple specifically when you're doing exercise and if you really want to try something a little bit crazy i do this before i go to sleep at night okay that's micro pore um you know, tape that they use when they're, they're using bandages. You can do it with um, sellotape or anything like that. And one of my trainees, um, Esther, she started doing this. Um, in fact, she, she encouraged me to do it because I'd heard about it, but I'd never done it. I was a bit too scared to do it. I thought my wife would laugh at me. And Esther said, yeah, at first your partner will laugh at you because you will look ridiculous. But then they'll stop. They'll see what amazing sleep you are having and they will start to do it as well. So... It does feel a bit strange at first and I don't encourage you to do this because the other thing that it can do is it can increase feelings of panic like you'll wake up and you can't breathe in a normal manner so don't you know be gentle on yourself you don't have to do it immediately but it's something fun to try around with if you don't mind looking silly with some tape across your mouth okay so that's just some things that you can play around with any questions around around nose breathing Okay, try and do it as much as possible. Any questions that anyone, um, so no questions around that. Okay, who's got a technique for us that they would like to share? Mm. Some people, ah, um, oh, Nicola, excellent. You're obviously a yogi, so go ahead. I did not put my hand up. <laughs> you definitely so, put your hand up. I think I just touched my, my ear or something. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't put my hand up. I was going to, if I was put on the spot, probably say alternate nostril breathing, but I know how complicated it is to follow, let alone lead. So I wouldn't attempt to lead. Would you like to have a go? I mean, you've got a safe space here. No one's going to like say that you've done it wrong. <laughs> I've, I've actually, I probably need somebody to lead me with it, to be honest. Um, I know the hand positions, but I've forgotten sort of in the in and out bit. So I don't know whether you have. Is there that. anyone else who would like to um, uh, lead that? Any other yogis here? Sol, how are you feeling? Are you going to have a go? No, yeah. I know how to do it, but I don't know if I will be able to lead it. I, I can try. I mean, go on, have a go. Okay. First, we are going to take our right hand and we are going to put down the first two fingers, so the index and the middle one. And we are going to close our right nostril with the little one here. And the left one with the other finger like this. And we are going to close first our left nostril and we are going to breathe through the left, through the um, right. So inhale. Exhale here again. 
and then we are going to close the right one and inhale with the left. Exhale here. And then we change. Exhale here. And then we change. Let's do one more time on the right. Exhale here. And then release your nostril and that's uh, deep breathing. That's more or less what, I, <laughs> what I've experienced in my classes. <laughs> I'll give her a round of applause. <laughs> yes, or a wave. Well done, Sol. Thanks. Thank you. That was perfectly led. Perfectly led. Um, and so, Nicola, just come back to you. You've obviously been doing this breath for a while. What are the benefits that you've experienced doing this breath? Um, the, the, that breath, it gives a very cooling, um, you know, I think it, a very cooling sort of feeling through your head and I, I like almost like a, re a pressure relief. Um, it's very good for concentration. And so I know a lot of people do it before they've got um, like an, an exam or, you know, maybe a presentation or a meeting at work. Um, it gives you like a, a, a um, um, clarity, uh, but it's quite instant. So it, mm. it's a good one to use. Yeah. Yeah. Clarity for sure. Uh, mm. Sol, have you got any other, um, anything else you'd like to say about alternate nostril breathing? Um, I've, uh, I've experienced that it also, if you feel tired or if you feel like too excited, it helps you to balance your feelings or your state at that moment. Mm. And as Nicola said, it, it helps you feeling like balanced. Yeah. So yeah, it's very good before, um, doing like something important, like a presentation, as she said, like just yeah. to feel like easy and calm. Definitely. And uh, Gemma. Oh, I think it also, isn't it the yin and the yang, because you've got the masculine and the feminine, so it's good for balancing out both sides of that, that energy in you. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Uh, very good for anxiety and for if you're feeling stressed or anxious about things as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, and there's different ways you can do it. Uh, uh, Jen, my wife, has got a phobia about the idea of her nostrils being pushed down. You know, she's, she's worried that they might not pop back again. So there's another technique that you can do it just like where you cover up your nostrils just underneath. You know, it doesn't have to be in a mudra, uh, which is how it's traditionally taught, um, mm -hmm. you know, in yoga. But I also know some yoga teachers who teach it energetically. So they'll do it in Shavasana. And then you just imagine the air going in through one side and out through the other. So you don't have to physically doing it you can just do it with your imagination or energetically as well there aren't really any contraindications as far as i'm aware around that um, at all just again go to a depth your body will tell you if you have to stop any questions <laughs> around that i think we've probably got time for one more technique um, to do okay let's open it up again is there anyone else who would like to lead a technique or share a technique, or even just say about a breathwork technique. Gwyneth, go on, you, you may have to unmute yourself. Um, well, we did cover the Sufi breathing slightly earlier on. And they say that that one's quite energizing to do. Okay, would you? Should we do um, a bit of Sufi breathing? I haven't got the music. That's all right. To play, or I <laughs> but I'll sort of do it sitting down, if yeah. you like. Um, so you blow out three times, and then you inhale inwards, but through your mouth. So you go. <laughs> Do 
to do it like that. But yeah. if you do it to some good music, okay. and the, you jump up and down, just not jump down, up and down, you stand. You have to, I'll try and do it, stand to get up if you like. Um, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. So you, yeah. you <laughs> bounce up and down like this, and you go. It's a good one to do first thing in the morning because it really energizes you. And if it you're is. really annoyed with somebody, you could really tell them off as you're doing it. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to share some music so we can do this, and we're just going to do this for two minutes, okay, okay again. And if you, can't, um, if you can't do it standing up, you can just go... And we're going to do it for two minutes, okay? And I'm going to okay. put some music on as well for you. Okay. Can you hear some music? Can you hear music? Thumbs up if you can hear yep. music. Okay, so let's do two minutes. now. So just bouncing up and down, feet on the ground, just using your knees to bounce up and down. If you want to move around, that's fine as well. That's it. Now if you want to kind of move around more, you can do. Or you can just stay still and bounce up and down when you need to do it. Halfway through, one more minute left. Inhale, put your hands on your knees or sit down, and then exhale slowly. And then maybe just close your eyes and just center yourself, maybe tap on yourself. Wow. <laughs> Good one, Gwyneth. Thank you for bringing that in. Um, so just let's, let's hear just about your experience of Sufi breathing and tell us about what your experience of that kind of breath work is. Um, well, I learned it through your breath works and also by bre uh, reading Dan Brule's book. Um, I find it, I do it first thing in the morning when I'm working. Um, I do 10 minutes of it with the music that you just played, the laughing drums. And then usually I will do five minutes conscious breathing and then five minutes of just being. as felt sense, I, I guess. And um, yeah, I find it, it's quite uplifting, but it's quite good of uh, getting rid of tension and stuff as well. Or if you've got some issues that you can throw it out a bit energetically and so it usually I find that things will calm down then and um, you feel ready for the day yeah that's my kind of experience with it it's a really really powerful technique 
um, that, that um, Sufi breathing. So I've just copied up into the chat box the link to the track that we were dancing to, a drumming track. Um, normally we would do that for a minimum 10 minutes, okay? Uh, and we'll do it maybe two or three times. Um, and it's called Sufi breathing because my teacher, Anthony, was taught to it by actually an Osho uh, practitioner because it's very like an uh, Osho active meditation. Uh, and it's just like the how much it stirs things up and lets things go is just absolutely crazy. Uh, it's a very powerful breath work. So I don't know, I wouldn't normally do that in one of these um, open workshops, <laughs> but it is part of the, yeah, but so uh, well done. So naughty for bringing it in, Gwyneth. Um, but it's part of the foundation course um, that I run. Um, so Nicola, I know that you've just joined the foundation course. You'll be doing um, Sufi breathing on week three, I think it is. We do Sufi breathing, we, we jump into that. Uh, yeah, so really powerful technique, really fun to do as well, because you can combine it with kind of dancing round as well. And it's great to do in a group. It's so much fun. Um, so any, we're kind of coming towards the end of our time here now. So are there any questions or are there any, um, anything else people would like to ask about? Uh, so, Nicola. It, it, it wasn't a question, it was just to say thank you. I cannot tell you how different I feel now to the beginning of um, the call. Um, yeah, let's let's I, put you on. Yeah. Uh, I've just put you on um, speak of you and you look different. I, I, my, I, I, I was literally feeling quite low. Um, I, I, burnt out and um my skin is like come back my eyes have come back i've got a burst of energy and i just feel happy like and and it calmed my whole my it, my nervous system just feels totally in sync now with with me so yeah thank you <laughs> i needed that good oh you look yeah. different you really do you know i can see it in your face and mm. um this is why I get so passionate about breathwork because it's it's so instant, it's so transformational, and you know it's free. Really, everyone has that. Once you've been sh shown the techniques and you know how to do it, you know, yeah, you know, it's a gift that we all have available to us all the time. It's it's an amazing, amazing thing to do. So, pleasure. I get you know I love doing these things. <laughs> um, well, thank you. So if you want to do more with me, um, obviously we have our online breathing space every Thursday. Um, so that's at eight thirty PM UK time, which is very early afternoon if you're in um, in North America. So Sol, that's for you. Probably one thirty if you're in Calgary. We do that. Um, we've got the foundation course, uh, which is which is going. Uh, Nicola, you've just joined that, which is only twenty dollars to join, and that we go deeply into those breath techniques as well. Um, if you join, I've got what else do I've got? I've just launched a video channel. Which is very exciting where i interview um breath workers like famous breath workers um and that's really good fun but there's a lot of breath work there's a lot of conscious breath work out there at the moment so if you'd like to connect to me please just have a look at the um you know the website there's all sorts of courses on there um that you know you can join in on i'm just going to paste that in there in the link and you know please join in if you would like to make it, this is a free workshop, but I do accept donations, you know, for running it. So I'll just put a link up to an event bright link where you can donate something if you wish to, but please don't feel any pressure to, because, you know, I want to spread this as, um, because I'm passionate about breathwork. I think everyone's lung health can be improved, but I do also, if you're giving something, sometimes it's good to recognize, uh, the financial and uh, recognizing things energetically can also be recognized by contributing financial. So if you're not in a, in a place to do that, absolutely fine, it doesn't matter. If you can and you would like to, by all means, you can donate something through that Eventbrite link. I'll be running one of these probably in a couple of weeks time, but there is also the course version of this as well. Um, and also in the course, there's a place where you can upload your own techniques because I want it to be a collab, just like these workshops are collaborative. The course is collaborative as well, so you can upload your own techniques. And uh, we've just had um, someone upload a new one on, on these actually. Um, 
So how do I do that? I'll just put the link up there as well. So it's a free course. This doesn't cost anything. Uh, and again, I am just super, super enthusiastic about people improving their lungs about breath work. So those are the, could, can everyone see the links um, up there? They're coming through on the chat box. I'll paste them on the um, Facebook event as well and on any links as well. So is there anything else that needs to be said before we wrap up today? Thank you all for coming along. And I really mean that. I really appreciate you all coming along and, um, you know, sharing, sharing this as well. I'm passionate about it. And if you've enjoyed about it, please share it as well. You know, maybe a post on social media, but it could just be telling a friend, try this breath work exercise out, or and it doesn't even have to be with me. It's not about me, but encourage people to breathe more. That's what my mission in life is now. Anything else that needs to be said? Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's thank unmute. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Let's all unmute ourselves and we'll finish off by taking three breaths together. How about that? Okay. Let's take three breaths together. Thank you everyone. Thanks. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.